my god. All the titles are wrong. Okay. Power Places and Networks, IB Geography, and this video is Powerful Organizations and Global Groups. So the subtopics are basically all these organizations, so G7-8, G20, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, Influence over Energy Policies, and Global Lending Institutions, including the International Monetary Fund and the New Development Bank. Okay, so first of all, we'll go through the G7, G8, and G20. So G8 was made up of HIC countries, USA, France, Germany, Italy, UK, Japan, Canada, and Russia. However, Russia was suspended, not expelled, so they were suspended after the annexation of Crimea. Um, and there were other incidents involved, like in 2013, G7 leaders wanted um, Assad to leave office. But Russia refused this, so obviously there were some tensions there. Also, following the 2014 MH17 crash, the USA and the EU imposed sanctions on Russia as it was allegedly hit by Russian-backed rebels. Um, so, and also another criticism. Okay, yeah, so that makes it the G7 rather than the G8. Um, and some criticisms of the G7 is that without China, it cannot claim to be truly global, as China is obviously a large is considered a global superpower. Okay, then the G20 involves um, Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, France, Germany, India, Indonesia, Italy, Japan, South Korea, Mexico, Russia, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, Turkey, UK, USA, and EU. Um, these countries make up 80% of global GDP, 80% of world trade, and 65% of the world's population. So it's quite, um, it does take a lot of like it represents a fair share of the global population and economic activity and things and and global wealth. Um, however, Africa is argued to be underrepresented. Um, they how okay I, the order of this is kind of weird, but so the main interest in global kind of um, events is to. Um, have global economic governance to run global policy they have two have had two summits a year since the 2008 financial crisis but then from 2011 onwards they only had one um, summit annually okay now for the OECD so it was initially the OEEC created after World War II to run the Marshall Plan in order to reconstruct Europe the aims were are to restore confidence in markets re-establish healthy public finances and make them sustainable, foster and support new growth through innovation, green growth strategies and emerging economies, allow people of all ages to develop skills to work productively. It's set, 37 members are listed here, I'm not going to read them all out, but those are all the members. Um, evidently a lot of high income countries, so maybe an argument to evaluate the OECD is that it might be too centric towards maybe, it might be too Eurocentric or too kind of high income country centric um which might you know lead to discrimination against low income countries or kind of tensions around that now we're going to look at opec so organization of the petroleum exporting country so it was established in 1960 to encounter oil price cuts by the eu and the u.s oil firms member states are iran iraq kuwait saudi arabia venezuela qatar indonesia libya uae algeria nigeria and ecuador and in the 1970s, Middle Eastern countries, so these countries here, UAE, Libya, Qatar, um, they gained, well, Libya, I don't know if Libya is Middle East, but in the 1970s, Middle Eastern countries gained significant power politically and economically, thus other countries became arguably obliged to maintain healthy relations with these Middle Eastern countries, um, and the Middle Eastern countries themselves needed to try and maintain stability because Obviously, oil prices are a key part to the economy and they can disrupt the exchange rate and they can kind of impact the market in a lot of different ways if they're unstable. Um, so there's this need for stability in these types of like um, cartel markets. 
Okay, International Monetary Fund, the IMF, was established in 1944 following the demise of the Great Depression in the 1930s. There are 44 th founding members wanting to build an international framework for international cooperation. It's now an organization of 190 countries working to foster global monetary cooperation, secure financial stability, facilitate international trade, promote high employment and sustainable economic growth, and also reduce poverty around the world. Criticisms towards the IMF are that it's unconcerned with democratic values, human rights and labour rights. It has also been criticised for its austerity programmes in which it increases the tax rates, possibly creating negative impacts for the economy. And they can also have a delayed response to like global crises and events. And they're also said to be possibly too westernised and like again like the OECD to an extent, kind of too, like, um, too focused around HIC countries. Okay, now we have the World Bank. So this is actually the twin intergovernmental pillar to the IMF, founded in 1944, also under the Bretton Woods system, like the IMF. It is an international organization dedicated to providing financing, advice, and research to developing nations to aid their economic advancement. The bank predominantly acts as an organization that attempts to fight poverty by offering developmental assistance to middle and low income countries. And criticisms of it, however, are that it's too westernized, again, like the IMF. Its governance has been said to be overly dominated by HACs, too focused on GDP rather than qualitative measures such as standards of living or environmental damage and things like that. Structural adjustment programs have unfair requirements and measures and heavily indebted poor country initiatives can be unfair for LIC. So um, SAPs and HIPCs are both kind of um, like programs that the World Bank runs and has run in the past, which have been kind of widely criticized for their methods and maybe unfair um regulations and things okay now we have the new development bank so this was founded in july of 2014 by the BRICS countries brazil russia india china south africa and the yeah so the new development bank is a multilateral development bank established by these BRICS countries with the objective of financing infrastructure and sustainable development projects in BRICS and other emerging economies and developing countries they provide loans for private projects, infrastructure, and sustainable development. So they're kind of catered towards developing countries and being kind of sustainable. So kind of arguably a good alternative to these more like Euro-centric, like westernized organizations that might um, have different priorities as these are strictly like trying to target these emerging economies.